Algebra 2, 2.8d, Equivalent Statements. So these are inequalities or equations that are equivalent. If you haven't seen videos 2.8a, b, or c, my advice is to watch those first because this is 2.8d and it's the end of the lesson. You might get confused. and You can click on this video's description to go right to them, okay? So equivalent equations are two or more equations that are equivalent to each other, and they have the same solution set. And equivalent inequalities are two or more inequalities that are equivalent to each other with the same solution set. If we know which operations give us equivalent statements, we can do less work of proving converses. That's always a good thing, right? To not have to do more work. And there's two types of steps to get us a solution set. There's a reversible and a non-reversible. The reversible one says that we can add the same amount to each side or subtract the same amount to each side, and we're going to get an equivalent statement and our solution set. The non-reversible one would be if it deals with an absolute value because x might be a negative 3. And if you're confused about the absolute value, go to video 2.7a and there's a link in this description so you can just go there. We talked about absolute values and expressions and the meaning of x when it's in absolute value bars, okay? So here's the theorem I'm going to show you. It's about equivalent statements. It says the use of the addition and multiplication property of equality and inequality produces equivalent statements under the following conditions. So we've got two conditions. The expression added or multiplied to each side must be defined for all replacements and the expression by which we multiply, now it doesn't say add, the expression expression by which we multiply must never have the value zero. What this theorem is saying is whenever we add a constant or multiply by any non-zero constant, so it can't be a zero, we get equivalent statements. So when solving a simple equation or inequality, we can use this theorem as our excuse to not have to prove the converse. That's a good thing, isn't it? So this is what it's saying. If we have 10x is less than 20, it's equivalent if we add a constant of 5 to each side of the inequality or a constant of 2 to each side, it's still going to be equivalent to 10x is less than 20. And we can multiply by a constant as long as it's not a 0. So if we multiply both sides by 2, it's still going to be an equivalent statement. See? 10x is less than 20 is equivalent to 20x is less than 40. Now, when we add a zero, that's okay. We can add a zero to each side and make an equivalent statement. But when we multiply by zero, what happens is for an inequality, we end up with zero is less than zero. And that is not true, is it? We can't have zero is less than zero. That doesn't make any sense. So adding zero is okay, but multiplying zero is not, all right? So to show that, multiplying by zero can cause problems, we can try to prove that x equals 1 and x squared equals x are equivalent. Let's see if they are. So x equals 1, well, you could actually see right away that 1 is our solution set, and we can just do that. If you want to go into detail, we can multiply both sides by x. We get x squared equals x. We can divide both sides by x to get back to x equals 1. Well, x equals 1, that's our solution set. Now, on this one, x squared equals x, when we multiply both sides by x, we get x to the third power equals x to the second power, and when you subtract them, we just get an x. And on this side, we get a 0. So now we have a 0 in our solution. On this side, we could also do x to the third power divided by x squared and x squared divided by x squared and get x equals 1. Remember, when we're doing division, we subtract them. So our solution set ends up being a 0 and a 1. It could be either one of these. On this one, it was only 1. Well, solution sets are not, these solution sets are not equivalent. To be equivalent, they need the same solution set. So 0 can cause problems. Okay? Now, which of these will be sure to make equivalent statements? Without a doubt, we know they'll make equivalent statements. If we add 1 over x to both sides? No, because what if the x is a 0? Then that's undefined, isn't it? So that one's a no. We can't do that one. Can we do adding 4x minus 4x to both sides? Yeah, actually, 
a positive 4x minus 4x is a zero pair, and we can add zero to both sides. We saw that. That's fine. It doesn't change it, does it? So that one's okay. Number two is okay. Number three, multiplying both sides by x plus two. No, because x might be a negative two, and that would create a zero pair. Negative two plus two makes a zero. Then that means we'd be multiplying by zero, and then we'd end up again with zero is less than or greater than zero. So no, that won't work with an inequality, would it? How about number four, multiplying both sides by x squared plus one? Yes, this will always be non-zero. Even if x is a zero, we're doing zero times zero plus one. Well, that means we're adding one to each side. So yeah, that would work. How about multiplying both sides by five over x plus two? No, again, that x might be a zero and it might be undefined, okay? And how about adding three to both sides? Yep, just like we did over here, we can add the same number to both sides and it's gonna make an equivalent statement. So yeah, that would be okay, all right? So also remember, if the solution set is empty, it's called an empty set null set or it's called a contradiction and we write it inside the set braces with a zero with a slash through it, okay? Our next video is going to be 2.9 and we're going to do a word problem tr strategy called try, test, revise and we've done that all throughout grade school. They called it guess and test. So that's our next video before we go to chapter three. And this video and all the previous videos will be in the description of this video in the Algebra 2 playlist. So you can study for chapter tests or catch up a review. And I'm going to have a link to my Algebra 1 chapter of Inequalities and Absolute Values playlist. All right? So make it easy for you. Just one click away so that you can find out what you're missing. All right? Or to study or review. All right? So keep trying. I think anyone who's on YouTube watching math videos is doing a great job trying to get their grade up or trying to understand something, and that shows a lot of character. That means a lot about you, okay? So I'm really proud of you. I'll see you next video. Bye.